Good morning, everyone. Good morning. That made everyone jump, didn't it? Hey, eh? it's a little up there. Boop. How are you? Good. Well, we're a little bit low in numbers today, because Scotty's thrown his guitar around already. We're a little bit short in numbers today, but that's okay. I remember something in the scriptures saying when there's two or three gathered, God's going to be here. God's in the house, all right? He's here with us. And uh, we've got people out in the mission field today, in our community, doing stuff. And that's something that we uh, will be praying for. But uh, I hope you enjoy it this morning. I've uh, got our good friend Scotty has come to share some music with us once he changes his guitar again. And... Um, we're going to have a, a, a good rockin' morning. Okay? Good rocking morning. Hopefully. But, uh, and, and um, yeah, so uh, enjoy this morning. We're just going to, I'm just going to quickly pray. Lord, we just want to open this service to you, Lord, and ask your Holy Spirit to move amongst us as we enjoy praising you, worshipping you, and going through the things that we need to do that uh, we call worship. So, Father, thank you. Good morning, everyone. How are we doing? Sorry, I'm a bit deaf. You're going to have to speak up. How are we doing? I've had the privilege of being able to mix a few bands over the last couple of nights, but they were really loud, so I've had ringing in my ears for the last couple of hours. So, yeah, if I'm a bit off key, you know why. So this morning, I'm going to be doing some praise songs, and they're, they're a little bit country, rocky, bluesy, that sort of thing. And I want you to participate. Clap, sing, enjoy. If you want to get up, stand, dance and do a boogie, that's all good. Don't copy me, because that's terrible. But if you want to do your own thing, that would be great. Are we all warmed up, or are we cold and chilly? Cold and chilly. Well, even if you want to sit there and clap like this, or wave your arms, whatever, let's get warmed up. So the first song is from 1993, so I'm going back to my youth years, or my younger, young adult years, and it's called Shelter by Hillsong. And the next couple of songs I'm going to blend in and they'll just work in. So people on the overhead, you need to be awake and ready because I'll be swapping around and going all over the place. Are we ready? Yes. Okay, you give me Shelter. You give me shelter, you give me peace, you give me comfort and healing release. The peace and comfort of the knowledge of God in my heart. You heal my body, release my mind, you set me free to leave the past behind. The peace and comfort of the knowledge of God in my heart. And no matter what life may bring, peace my heart just makes me sing. You're my God, Savior Lord, you're my God, King of Kings, you're my God, Prince of Peace. And all the earth is going to see the glory of my God. You give me shelter, you give me shelter. You give me peace, you give me comfort, the healing release, the peace and comfort of the knowledge of God in my heart. You heal my body, release my mind, and set me free to leave the past behind. The peace and comfort of the knowledge of God in my heart. And no matter what life may bring, peace my heart just makes me see you're oh my God. Savior Lord, you're my God. King of kings, you're my God. Prince of peace, all the earth is going to see the glory of my God. 
Okay, we're going to sing your name. Are you ready? I hear the sound of the holy war. A battle going on in the name of the Lord. He's already won the victory. The saints rise up and the enemies flee. God of creation, He is on your side. He came that we might have new life. You took my destiny into your hands. In Jesus' name I safely stand. My heart's on fire to do your will. My one desire is to spend my lifetime praising your name. Your name. Heaven and earth are gonna bow down to your name. Your name. My soul rejoices at the mention of your name. Your name. The sick shall recover when they call to you. No other name like Jesus. No other name like Jesus. We'll do that one again, shall we? I hear the sound of the holy war, a battle going on in the name of the Lord. He's already won the victory, saints rise up and the enemies win. God of creation, he's on your side, he came that we might have new life. You took my destiny into your hands. In Jesus' name I safely stand. My heart's on fire to do your will. My one desire is to spend my lifetime praising your name. Your name. Heaven and earth are gonna bow down to your name. Your name, my soul rejoices at the mention of your name. Your name, the sick shall recover when they call to you. No other name like Jesus. No other name like Jesus. He didn't get the last word in this time. <laughs> he almost. <laughs> Are we a blessed people in the house of the Lord? What was that? Yes. yes. Do we lead blessed lives because of the Lord? Yes. How do the blessings come? <laughs> New every morning. New every morning. <laughs> you know... Jesus is our rock. He's our foundation stone. He's where everything that dwells within us comes from and all our blessings. He was here at the beginning of time, before the earth and we were formed. Isn't that mind blowing? So I'm gonna sing a song now by Jeff Bullock. Um, and again, it's 1993, so I'm starting to show my age a bit. And it's called Blessed Be My Lord, Blessed Be My Rock. Blessed be my Lord, Blessed be my Rock. Blessed be my fortress and my shield. Come on, let's sing. Jesus rescued me. He delivered me. Forgiven, saved, restored, he set me free. Heaven shall hear the righteous cry. The 
praises to him we give him glory but where is our heart this morning is it with our sovereign Lord is our heart ready for the blessing that God wants to give us we thank you Lord for the blessings you give as we call to worship this morning, as we come and worship you, we give you glory and we give you praise as we continue to worship the one and only living God. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Scotty. much a rest of the vocals today is it <laughs> now this one we've got a little bit of country and hillbilly who likes that sort of thing and it's a powerful hymn where is the power sorry I didn't hear that in the blood of where in Jesus of the lamb who knows this one power in the blood okay I'll do the best I can I'm a bit croaky but here we go are we ready, guys? Rip. <laughs> Would you be free from that burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you worry the love Wonderful power in the heart. Let's sing it. There is power.
people know that we are being filmed live and that if parents are okay with their kids coming up the front then uh, that's I'm just letting you know that we are online and we need to do that these days just to let people know and if the parents want to give permission for their kids to come to the front that's by bringing them up the front and that's their their permission so I just want to let you know that because these days you can't put people online, <laughs> just like that. So it's one of those things we have to live with. So uh, if the parents are happy to bring their children forward, we're going to do a children's song. So we're going to be dancing, we're going to be doing all sorts of stuff. So I think all the adults probably need to stand for this one as well, because we're going to be... Oh, you're standing, isn't it, Scotty? Sitting and scanning, yes. So you can sit for a bit, because you're going to be standing and sitting. <laughs> the drop on the guitar didn't do much good. <laughs> While we're doing this, we get those. Thanks, Bill. Morning. Slight reversal of order here. In touch is out and available, of course. It's sitting out on the um, table out the front there. A few things just to highlight for you. This one in particular, the men's hamburger lunch. Come along, come along and enjoy men getting together. Bring a friend, your father or your son. Hamburgers will be men size. And drinks available. This is August the 13th from 11 till 2. I think, I don't know what a men's size hamburger is. Sometimes I enjoy those small ones that they call sliders as well. I'm not sure I enjoy the ones that you get from a certain fast food chain though. Moving on from that, we have Saturday, the 30th of July, the Congregational Breakfast, which was yesterday. And that was run by Marion and myself, and we had a great time in the morning. Around 30 people turned up, and we ate well. 
and Fellowship Dwell. Moving on, you've got um, Monday night, Bible study with Gary. Tuesday, Bible study with Christine. That's at 1.30 p.m. Wednesday, Christmas lights meeting for those of us that are involved in the preparation and lead up to that. And Thursday, a prayer and praise night with Gary from seven till nine. And they're looking for computer and projector operators who might feel inspired to become part of that team down the back there. We're about to lose one of our um, stalwarts, Margaret Sugden, is moving on because of family reasons, I gather. And uh, that's not too far away. So filling her gap and getting a couple of others would be wonderful. There's some, the new With Love to the World daily devotions are available. There's not many of them, but if you'd like to uh, receive one of those or put your name down for one of those, they're $6 and they're available through the office. And there is a soup and damper evening coming up at 6.30 on the 6th of August. It's $10 for a person or $20 a head. Enjoy yourself on a soup and damper night. This is the sort of weather where they go down well, isn't it? And uh, coming back to, so that you really get it in your mind, the men's hamburger lunch. Please don't forget that. Do we want to do the collection as well? Sorry, you'll do this? Okay, that's it folks, thank you. Good morning. Um, there's a couple of other announcements uh, over and above those that are in, in touch. On the 28th of August, we will be holding our next congregation meeting. It will be the AGM. Since we had deferred the elections from the meeting in March, we will also be holding elections for the positions of elder and church council member. The letter to the congregation went out on Friday, and so if you receive your notices from the church via email, you would hopefully already have seen that information. We are opening the nominations as of today, and they will go through until noon on Friday the 12th of August. That will give us a clear fortnight before the meeting to provide you with the information on who the nominees are for those positions. In addition, the position of Congregation Chair and Congregation Secretary will also be decided at that meeting and I think that the best way to do those two is going to be by way of nominations from the floor on the day. And so I ask you to think about whom you would like to lead the congregation in both of those positions going forward. All terms of office will be for a two-year term and there will be, coming out in the next week, the guidelines for the positions of elder and council uh, members. So, Gary, do you want to add anything? Okay, that's it, thank you very much. Okay, we're going to... So if those who like to pass the offering bags around, that would be great. Yeah, thank you.
Heavenly Father, we just commit this, these, these tithes and offerings, Lord, to you. And we pray that these go to the extension of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, where are those kids? Here we go, dancing. Okay, it's time to really warm up. Are we ready? Yeah. Okay, so there's no music up on the screen for you to follow, but it is really simple. It's got a few words, and I'll see if you can remember. It's Allelu, 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 Alleluia. Praise ye the Lord. We got it? Yep. Okay, so what I want to do is this half of the church, I want to do the Allelu, 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 Alleluia. And this half of the church do praise ye the Lord. Who's doing praise ye the Lord? Yes, sir. Praise Are we ready? We'll give it a go. I'll start nice and slow. But here's what I want you to do. Is I want you to keep aside which half of the church you're going to be on. Right. So when you see your car, you are to stand up like this. When you finish your part, you are to lower the plane or sit on the ground. Can we do it? Mm -hmm. All right. I my knees to come on time and help me do it Okay. Everyone out there, if you want to do it as well, stand when you sing your part and sit down or do the wave when you sing your part. And down. Have we got it? Yes. All right. Remember it's this side? Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Praise ye the Lord. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Alleluia. Praise ye the Lord. Alleluia. Praise ye the Lord. Alleluia. Praise ye the Lord. Sorry about that. I'm just as confused as you are. <laughs> are we ready to do a bit more? Are we starting to get warmed up or do we need to do our exercises to give it a go? This side's going great. This side's going great. Come on, you guys. Pick up your game. Let's go. You guys need to sing up in this one. Let's yes. go. Ready? Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Praise ye the Lord, Alleluia. Praise ye the Lord, Alleluia. Alleluia. Praise ye the Lord. Ready? Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Praise ye the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord, Alleluia. Praise ye the Lord, Alleluia. Praise ye the Lord, Alleluia. Praise ye the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Praise ye the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Alleluia. Praise ye the Lord. Alleluia. Praise ye the Lord. Alleluia. Praise ye the Lord. Alleluia, 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 praise ye the Lord. Alleluia, 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 praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Alleluia, praise ye the Lord. Alleluia, praise ye the Lord. Alleluia, praise ye the Lord. Can I take a break now? <laughs> so guess what I'm going to do now? Wear swapsies. Are we ready for this? Okay, so this side's hallelujah, this side's praise you the Lord. A little bit more action would be excellent. <laughs> are we ready? Hey kids, are we ready? Yeah. Hallelujah, 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 praise you the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 praise you the Lord. Praise you the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. 
see a bit on coordinated, aren't they? Yeah? <laughs> One more time, Alleluia, 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 praise ye the Lord. Alleluia, 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 praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Alleluia, 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 praise ye the Lord. Alleluia, praise ye the Lord. I think we wound them up. Yeah. <laughs> now the parents can look after them. <laughs> That's what I say with my grandkids. That's what I say about my grandkids. I wound them all up for the parents and then they take them home. <laughs> and they go, Dad, you've always wound them up. And well, I only gave them red lollies and <laughs> things like that, you know. That's what grandparents are supposed to do, yeah. aren't we? Yeah. Of course. It's all about winding them up and then sending them home. Before I go on, I just want to make a point that we have a family just up the back here. And yes, you can look at them. You're allowed. And... Uh, They've had one child baptised here already, Dominic, and um, we've got a, another one about to be baptised in August. So I get to know them. Um, so uh, when we make our vows and things at the time of the baptism, the congregation knows who the child is and who the parents are, because I think that's important. So they've come along today, and uh, so I get to know them at morning tea, and. Um, don't give them the flu. They don't want the flu with the kids. <laughs> but uh, keep that to yourself. But yeah, so we just uh, so get to know them at the um, other time and when we have morning tea. Lord, we let's pray. let's pray. Lord, we come to you asking Father that you will deal with the things in our own lives. Stuff that's messing our heads up sometimes. It could be health problems, it could be death in the family, it could be just the fact that we're depressed. It could be all sorts of things, Lord, that cause us to have problems. So, Lord, we lift those problems to you and put them at the foot of the cross right now. Father, we also... Think of those in other countries at the moment, Lord, that are struggling. There's Christians in countries that are being persecuted. We lift those brothers and sisters up to you right now and ask, Lord, that you will keep them, protect them, Lord. And we just lift them up, Father. We think of those who are in all these camps of poverty and how governments can just put people Poverty over one side and the rich on the other. Oh, Lord, we just pray that there could be a balance instead of all those people being in such poverty. So, Lord, we, we uh, come to you with the war that's happening. There was not only one war, there's lots of wars going on. And uh, we know that these wars, Lord, don't cause good. They only have bad. And we think, Lord, of these people that are suffering so much in these things. We ask, Lord, our government to keep to the promises and not try and dodge them. They got elected because they promised lots of things. I just pray, Lord, now that they try and come to their promises and not try dodging them and making us go worse in our economy. I just pray, Father, that they will bring us out of where this, our economy could be going. Father, I also come to you in the area of 
our Christian faith because there are times now where our politicians and others are really making it hard and difficult for us as a church. And I ask, Lord, that you will be in our midst, give us the strength, as we see in Ephesians, where we need to stand and stand firm and believe that you are with us always, because you are. And so through these difficult times, Lord, as the church starts to get persecuted in this country, I just pray, Father, that we can stand and stand firm in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's just still our hearts and our minds. And, you know, if we just put our things that are going on in our lives, in our mind and in our hearts aside and just go, here I am, Lord. I want to worship you. Everything else doesn't matter, but this time I spend with you, just stilling our hearts, stilling our mind. It's amazing how the Holy Spirit touches us. <laughs> silently moves amongst us, empowers us, guides us. So as we sing this song, I worship you, I'm asking that you clear those thoughts, you clear those heavy burdens you have in your hearts and lay them at his feet. You focus on the cross and give thanks and worship God. Let's sing. Jesus. 
Pai, Lord. are the way, the truth, and the life. We can only come to God through you. You make the way, Lord. We lift you up, Father. While this music's playing, just look at your own lives right now. Think about those things that you need to hand over to God. He's waiting for you. He's a patient God. Just put those things at the cross. Something might only be little. Still hand it to Jesus. Give it to him. Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honour your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, 
and give the money to the poor, and you shall have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard will it be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God? This is the word of the Lord. This sounds scary, doesn't it? Because most of us are pretty rich when it comes to where we live, what we own, compared to some countries, our people on unemployment benefits get more. We live in a very wealthy country. We might not think that when we talk, look, look at our politicians and think about things that they do. But when it comes down to it, we live pretty good. The last comment Jesus said was how hard it is for a rich person to get into the kingdom of God. But you know what? We're going to just look at this a little bit further because I don't think it's about money. I don't think it's about how much you have. Because it's not always money that causes us to be rich. Some people could be rich in assets. Some people could be rich in things that they own. And very poor everywhere else. <laughs> I know people that own really flashy, nice old cars. And they collect them. But they don't have much food to put on the table. What I'm going to talk about today is where our riches lie. And this is what Jesus was talking about. He was talking about what's in your heart. And while we can follow all the rules, all the regulations, the commandments, we can do all the right things, we can say the right things, we can be the most hospitable person in the community, we can go, you know, often we've sought, sought and thought, well, isn't that person, don't they just give and give and give to people all the time? Aren't they a wonderful person? I wish I could be like that. We often think about people in our community. And as a fact, you get awards, the community awards for doing good things. But... What Jesus is saying here is about, yes, that's great. I'm fantastic that you do all those great things. But where's your treasure lie? And when we talk about treasure, where's our eternal being sitting? Are we sitting with God or are we sitting with the world and its treasures? I look at some of the richest people in the world and I go, wow, all that money. And they've got certain rich guys are playing, going into space and, you know, buying, making cars that run on batteries, um, doing stuff that I heard the other day that they're going to buy next 10 years that some, one of the countries is going to have vehicles that just fly. So you take off out of your garage and then go up the street and go in the air. Won't that be exciting? How many accidents are they going to have there? It's a bit of a drop too when you hit each other there. No getting out and going, oh mate, what happened? It's like <laughs> you hit there and then you've got to drop another 50 metres down. And the world's coming up with all sorts of great things. So we think. 
and some of them have great benefits. Who would still like to drive their old Holden from 1962? No? You would. I'd like to own one <laughs> because they're worth a lot of money. But I don't know about driving it. I mean, I'd, I'd really want to have uh, power steering put on it for a start. <laughs> I'd like to have those brakes that actually work. You know, those ones called uh, power brakes. Um, I, I'd like to have air conditioning. That would be nice, particularly when you live in Queensland. I haven't, you haven't shown me that yet. I haven't seen the heat. All of that is cold and wind up here and rain since I've been here. But I know one day it's going to be hot. And wouldn't it be great to drive around a car where you had to wind the windows down to, to try and cool off? And even so, those seats, oh, those bench seats, weren't they great? They were fantastic to sit on, like a lump of wood. But wouldn't it be great to go back and drive one of those again? Or are we happy with our vehicles? The ones, the nice new ones that go computers run. And that, I was talking to Val's husband, Pete, the other day. I said, how do you cope with all these computers, cars? He said, it's getting harder and harder. He was a, he's a mechanic. And he, he doesn't even hardly have to get a spanner out. Because it's all electric and it's computerised and it's, you know. I think our, our lifestyle has changed a lot. Dishwashers. Who's in favour of dishwashers? Yeah, I like dishwashers. Yeah, they're fantastic. And I use the excuse that it sterilises things. That's why we need to have a dishwasher. My wife says, what's wrong with your hands and a sink? But I said, no, no we need to sterilise everything. So that's my reason for having a dishwasher. Washing machines, oh my goodness. I remember walking to my grandmother's place and she had one of those ones that had rollers on the top. And they got it out, now that top and you stick it in. And then, it, no, nah, needs a squeeze again, put it through again. Weren't they fun? Why don't we just stay with that? Wouldn't that be fantastic? I think that'd be great to have just those old, old uh, washing machines that work like that. I believe even going back a bit further, they used to use washing boards, you know, where they had the ripples on them and you had to, I don't know what you did with the clothes, but you did something with them. And you scrubbed and scrubbed, did it? Yeah. And would, the thing is that everyone would have been very much fitter back then, <laughs> doing it all that way. And I remember a story my grandfather said to me one day about when the wireless came. He said the wireless was such a great thing, but then when TVs come, that was like awesome. TVs, wow, you know, and that was my era, TVs, where we had this box in the room that showed black and white pictures, that was great. And then I remember when colour came in, oh, what, how good was that? So our entertainment went from reading books and relaxing and talking to each other to sitting in front of a wireless and then TV. So I remember there was a program, I've heard it, but there's some funny programs they used to put on the wireless. And people used to sit around waiting for that time of day to hear the funny stories or whatever it was that came. What was that called? Anybody know? Green hey? Green yeah. What other ones were there? Were other, other... Dad, and Dave. Dad and Dave, that's the one? Yes. I mean, these are things that people waited for every day to listen to. And now we can just get in the car and put our 
$300 stereo on and just blast the car out. You know? and it does everything. It even has a, oh, phones, telephones. What did we do without a telephone? How did we actually live? Honestly, how did we do it? I remember when I was at school, I didn't have a phone. We used to go home and we used to run up to the park where everyone else ran up to and we actually talked to each other live. Oh, it was unreal, it was amazing. Live contact. And we actually sat and you could even go, yep, you're real. Oh, it was so good. Those days are gone, haven't they? Everything's virtual, it's online, it's pictures on, on your phone. We live in a different world, don't we? But where are our riches? Where is our heart? Is our heart still with the things that we have? Someone said to me, you got a Harley Davidson, you go and wash it all the time. I said, no. I actually don't give it a wash very often at all. Because some people do. They'll wash their bike and polish it all week so they can ride it on Sunday. They go for their big ride around on Sunday and, oh, it's got dirty again. Better spend the week cleaning it. Where is that person's heart? Yes, talking about you. Where's that person's heart? We need to check ourselves. Is it our, per, our heart in the fact that we have a great big family and we've got lots of grandkids? Is that where our heart is? I mean, it's all good. These are things that are not bad. And he didn't say to the rich young ruler, you're bad because you have a lot of money and possessions. But well, what was the problem with the situation was the rich young ruler couldn't give up his possessions. He couldn't give them up. I remember I had a challenge there one time. I really felt that I just got to sell me Harley. And then I wouldn't have an identity. So I thought. And it was a real challenge. What do I do? I said to God, I'm willing to sell it. I'll sell it. And then God said, it's okay, you can keep it. Because where my heart is. I was willing to sell it. I was willing to do that. We need to be willing to hand our heart to Jesus regularly because things climb into our minds, our thoughts, and the things we do to affect our relationship with God on a regular basis. And it might be all sorts of things that creep in. Well, they've got to be booted out, is what I say. Boot them out. Give them to Jesus. Don't keep them in there, because they're only going to affect our relationship with God. And we only have a relationship with God through... through yell it out Jesus. yes we only have a, a relationship with God through Jesus there is no other way I used to say you know there's a God spot in all of us what are we filling it with what are we filling that God spot the created part of us that God wants to bless which is our heart he, you know, when he looks down, he doesn't look at you and go, oh, gee, you've got a hair out of place. Um, we need to sort that out. Um, you know, I, I don't think that's uh, very good. Uh, and he looks at me and he goes, when are you getting a haircut? That's what God does. He looks at me and goes, when are you getting a haircut? <laughs> Oops, you put too much makeup on there. Oh, what other things? Oh, I don't like your bald head because really you're supposed to have hair on it. This is what God does all the time, doesn't he? No? He doesn't do that, does he? Where does he look when he comes and looks at us? 
when he wants to know who we are, where does he look? In our heart. And you know what? Our heart directs the whole body. When our heart stops pumping, we don't exist. We're gone. We're going to be with God. So when we think about this, our heart is very important. We, our thoughts go to our heart. Our actions are made in our mind what we're going to do and when we do those, we, those decisions are in our heart. God will look to us in our heart. Doesn't matter how you smell, doesn't matter how you look, doesn't matter who you are, you could be the most important person in the world. God doesn't care. Not, no care, sorry. Because God looks at the heart. He looks at the heart of man and mankind. And when he looks at us, he looks at us to see where we're at. Jesus looked at the heart of this ruler, this rich young guy, who followed all the commands, very religious. I've had people tell me, I go to church since I was a kid. I've been to church all my life. Where's your heart? Is your heart with Jesus? Or is it with this institution called church? And then people get very busy in church and they go, oh, I've got to be involved in every committee and I've got to be involved in all these things because that'll make me a better Christian. We may not think that, but we do that and it makes us feel better. You know what makes you feel better is when you get close to God. That's what makes us feel better. Because you know what? He hangs on to the things that for eternity. Now I can tell you now I'm feeling like I'm getting closer to it. I never thought I'd end up at 60 years old, nearly 61. I never thought of that. And here it is. It's happening. I wake up and I go, that's happening. Can't take it back. And we all know that we're getting closer to God every day. Our life's getting shorter. I'm not saying our lives are getting shorter. I'm saying we're getting closer to God every day. Yesterday we had three years. Today we've got just under three years. It changes, doesn't it? Our heart has got to be right with God because that's the only place he looks. So on judgment day, we'll be standing there and he'll go, do you know this person, Jesus, my son? And he'll go, he looked at their heart. Yes, I do. I know that person. And then he'll look at someone else's heart and go, not sure of that one. And that person will go, but hang on, I was an elder in the church and I was, and I was, I was on the council and, and I was out there on the park doing stuff for people and, and I was just such a good person. And Jesus goes, but I can't see their heart. I can't see you and your relationship with my father. It might sound harsh and I'll probably get asked questions after this message. But the bottom line is that's where God looks. He doesn't look at what we do and how good we do it. That's only man that does that. We judge each other like that. Oh, that person's really good at that. Well, that only comes from from us. What we want is we want to be judged by God. Where's our heart? Is it with him? Where was the heart of this young ruler? Why did Jesus say it's harder for a rich man or rich person to get into the gates of the kingdom? Why is it harder? Because if you've got lots in this world, it's hard to give it up. If you don't have much in this world, it's easy to give up and follow Jesus. And so we need to think about that 
it's harder for us to give up things because we are pretty well off. Who would give up their house to follow Jesus? Who would give up their car to follow Jesus? Who would give up their phone to follow Jesus? And I'm not asking people to do that. I'm not saying that's what's got to happen. But where is your heart in amongst all that? You can have all those rich things. That's fine. But where's your heart? My dad was visiting someone in Canada and he was a wealthy, wealthy man. And his dad said to him, how do you find being so wealthy and your Christian faith, how do, they, how do they come together? He says, Eric, he said to me, Dad, it is really hard. He said, you know, I started off giving 10% to God. Then I upped it to 20, upped it to 30, upped it to 40, upped it to 50. This man's built big colleges for people to learn how to do Bible college and, to, and pay, you know, free, free college stuff, you know, for people. And he kept going. He says, I'm up to 95% of my income now goes to God. And he says, and God keeps blessing me with more money. He says, I can't get rid of it. <laughs> he says, it just keeps giving me. It gives me, my work just keeps booming. Because where's his heart? Is his heart in his money? Is his heart in what he's doing for God? I'm not saying for us to do any of these things. And I don't want to be quoted at the end of the service going, Gary told me I've got to give up everything and I've got to throw it. As long as if you give it up, my, my address, I'll give you my address. <laughs> so I don't mind if you want to give up your boat. That's fine. But where's our heart in everything we do? That's it. That's why when Jesus says we need to have a childlike faith, because you, you think kids are sitting there going, well, you know, I need a house and a car and I need to have lots of money. and I need... They'd like to have money to go shopping for toys. But, you know, we, they've got a childlike faith, understanding of life. We get all complicated as we get older and try and complicate it and make it something else that's really not really need to be. But our faith in Jesus Christ needs to be simple. My challenge to you today and to you online, where is your heart? And if so... Do you need to fix it? Do you need to go to the doctor and fix it? Because Jesus is waiting for you. He's our physician. He's our doctor. He wants to know if he can fix our heart. Are you willing today to fix your heart? Because if you are, we're willing to support that as well. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, come to us in this time, Lord. We just pray that you will guide us, give us the understanding of how to make our hearts right with you, Lord. How do we give up everything we have and follow you? How do we do that, Lord? What does that mean for us individually? So, Lord, guide us into this and support each other, Lord. I just pray that, you know, you said love your God with all your heart, soul and mind and strength and also love your neighbour as you love yourself. I just pray, Father, our neighbours and ourselves, Lord, we'll be able to help and support people that want to love you. Help us to be like that, Lord. So, Father, be with us as we gather now for morning tea, that's a continuation of church. It doesn't say we're finished churched. Church is just going and continuing. We leave this in your name, Jesus.
Amen. Isn't it amazing that what we see and we do with our minds influences our heart? The things we do sets us up for a process of call. what goes in is what comes out. But the amazing thing is, if your heart's with right, right with God, his light shines through you. The power of his blood goes with you goes out into the community amongst people and they ask some questions sometimes. Why are you so different? So this next song is by uh, Graham Kendrick and again it's in the 90s, I'm showing my age. But it's about going forth in his name. It's about being bold, sharing with those who are suffering. It's about being bold about those who are stumbling in darkness. It's about being bold and standing and allowing God's light through his spirit to shine in the community. So let's stand and sing, go forth in his name. And welcome to those who've never been before. It's great to see you and we'd love to have a couple with you afterwards. Pray with you, okay? That'll be great.
from this place as we go home after morning tea Lord that you'll bless us Father you always want to bless your children and we ask and we want to receive that blessing today in Jesus name Amen come, come and get some prayer if you want prayer we've got people that will pray with you other than that go out and get some morning tea I think we've got some special things out there today, like hot food as well. Can I also, um, can I just say that I want to thank Scotty for coming up from Lismore. And uh, thanks, Scotty. He's done a great job. As usual.